I might start with you, Nathan, and tell us about, you know, what got you started? What was the seed of this stuff? My entrepreneurial journey began when I was about 15. Um, I read a lot of books as a kid and uh, I had a big imagination. And at, at some point, mum was like, you know what? It's time you read a different kind of book than your typical fantasy stuff. It's time you read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Can you raise your hand if you've read that book or heard of it? Yeah, like everyone, right? So it's a really good book to read, um, I think, in your teenage years because it gives you uh, a different lens to see the world through. You start to see the world through the through the eyes of someone who owns a business or who is a freelancer or who uh, is an employee. Um, so, it, yeah, it gave me, like, this new way of looking at the world and I thought to myself, wow, this is really interesting. Um, how can I get engaged? How can I do something about this? And um, I started looking around for opportunities to, I guess, create value for other people where I could, you know, charge money and make some extra pocket money for myself. Um, and I was looking around online and I stumbled across a supplier on Alibaba of, um, which is a big website, where you can buy things in wholesale, um, of vitamins, the lots of stuff like Nature's Way, Blackmores, you know, all the cliche vitamins, Swiss. Um, and I started reselling that stuff on eBay. Um, and within a couple of months of, you know, trying and testing and failing, I was making like over $1,000 a week as a 15-year-old. I was hooked that I'd been able to teach myself from reading a non-fiction book, from trying, like, trying and failing and just figuring things out to create this little job for myself that I did when I got home from school every day. And, and I've been kind of hooked on entrepreneurship ever since. Great. Thank you. What was your starter? What was your seed, Jen? So I was a film school student and um, was looking for work like most film school students. And I, I um, was fortunate enough to get um, a, a gig making a documentary for Down Syndrome New South Wales. I spent 18 months with six families and their sons and daughters with Down Syndrome as they participated in a project um, called the Up, Up and Away project. And um, at the centre of that project, um, they were creating circles of support and basically just drawing in people like friends, family, people from the community to come and meet regularly with um, the person in the family with Down syndrome to hear about that person's visions and goals. And then in their own way, if you're the family member or person from the community, thinking about how you can help that person achieve their goals. And um, a guy came to the documentary a bit late and this guy, um, his goal was to be an actor and he wanted to create a circle of support to help him achieve his goal of being an actor. And he made it quite obvious because um, when I first met him, he didn't say hello. He actually recited a Shakespeare soliloquy for me. Um, and he, he showed incredible talent. And I found myself, you know, faced with, you know, an opportunity. And I wrote a film for him to star in. And then went a step further and created a workshop to help people with disabilities that might not have had the opportunity to be on a film set before, you know, do this workshop with me and then come and board and help make this film with this guy, Jared, who was going to be the star of it. And um, simply in my own way made an opportunity for people to be included in the filmmaking process. And the film we made was called Be My Brother and that film actually won Tropfest in 2009. And I guess it was, that was the seed that started my not-for-profit bus stop films, which we now, we, we've got our mandate to help um, increase the participation of people with disabilities and other people from, you know, other marginalised communities in the film industry because storytelling is so important that we have all people's voices heard through the stories we tell. Thank you. So, Marita, what was the beginning for you? In my second year at uni, I decided to build a robot with my friends because I really like robots. And I thought, I'm going to approach the head of the electrical engineering department for some funding because we didn't have any money. And he said that he was interested in getting a group of students together to go to a school to teach girls robotics in order to get them interested in engineering. And I thought, that sounds like a great idea. Um, I don't know much about this big wide world. He's the head of electrical engineering. He knows about the world. Uh, I, I want to do something in the robotics industry. I'm, I'm going to do this. So I uh, wrote up a plan. I recruited 20 of my friends. I went back to him with my plan. And I said, all I need from you is a room and some robots. And um, 
and I can make this happen. And if I make this happen, can, can you fund my robots? And he said, if you make this happen, I'll fund your robots. And so um, out of my 20 friends, uh, three of them showed up and <laughs> we started designing robotics workshops and calling schools and getting even more people involved. And in three weeks, we had about 60 people involved. In three months, we taught five schools, 124 girls, uh, our robotics workshops. And that's how RoboGals was founded. And now, um, seven years later, uh, we've taught 50,000 girls around the world. We have chapters in 10 different countries. And um, we have 1,000 active volunteers around the world. So it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's been a journey and you just got to start with one little thing and it grows.